Good Monday morning on Monday, October 23rd. It is time for the 359 Podcast. I'm BBG, and it is episode 303. Here are your hosts, Joni Solzman and Roger Chang. Hey, all. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Good morning. How's everyone's weekend? Great. Great. Mostly. <laughs> just tired. It's almost Halloween. Spoken I got to like celebrate some Halloween I know. stuff. Um, yeah, I know. Um, do you have your costume ready? Um, not mine, but my kids. I all right. Have, Same here. Uh, no, actually, we... We spent the weekend trying to find a costume, but couldn't find it. So, what's it gonna be? An Elmo. Oh, little Elmo. So, did you let him pick? No, but he's obsessed with Elmo. Okay. So it's, <laughs> yeah, it's clear he's gonna want. Uh, so speaking of Halloween and spooky themes, we're gonna be talking about Stranger Things. Uh, Joan has a nice story on how Netflix gets you to click play on not just Stranger Things, but all shows. But uh, because of Stranger Things is premiering on Friday, we're gonna be talking about that. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, T-Mobile and Sprint potentially merging in the next few weeks, uh, what that's going to look like. Uh, and lastly, we'll talk about a story that Ben wrote about uh, this retailer that uses robotics and automation, but didn't fire people. So happy ending story. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Brian will pick out the best, and we'll get to them in 3 minutes and 59 seconds. Hang out for the headlines. We'll be back to see you in 3, 2... Welcome to the 359. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Joni Salzman. Stranger Things is coming back. Ahead of its premiere on Friday, Netflix revealed some of the tricks it gets to it gets to hook you into the show. Uh, Joni, you actually talked to them. What did you find out about sort of the, the little games they play when uh, <laughs> promoting their shows? Well, we all know that Netflix uses algorithms to surface shows that it specifically thinks that you, the individual, are going to be attracted to. But they go deeper than that. Um, for example, with Stranger Things, they and with all shows, um, they cater the image that you see with the suggested title in those carousels of suggestions mm. that you see. So with Stranger Things, if you were a fan of documentaries, you might see a picture of Chief Hopper. Or if you're a fan of dramas, you might see a picture of Eleven. Huh. Depending, Because what they would do is they would A-B test different images for different users and find out they would be able to home in pretty quickly on, well, this kind of user that really likes teen dramas would click more so with this picture than with the other. Yeah, it's just it's interesting to me because I just assume it's the standard boilerplate photo they, they surface. It's interesting that they put that much thought into what image correlates like what genre. Yeah, and for a while they would have image specific uh, images specific to a title by country, they would have like a different image for U.S. versus Japan. Right. But they found that that didn't really work because you can have somebody who has the exact same taste of you as you in Japan, and your next door neighbor could be somebody that like your their taste in movies like makes your skin crawl. Mm. So um, they found that the best thing to do is to cater the image to the taste that you have rather than the place that you are. And Stranger Things was surprisingly like topped a bunch of these like oh, yeah. taste charts, right? It's one of the it's one of the most um, popular shows on Netflix, and so it's the number one show in a lot of these what they call taste communities, mm -hmm. um, where people have similar kinds of tastes. Um, so you could be a fan of teen dramas, or you could be a fan of sci-fi, or you could be a fan of horror. And Stranger Things um, could be the top thing that you that is watched in that group um, for a lot of different. Yeah, I mean, I, I know I'm a fan of all those genres. The teen uh, dramas, too. Of course, of course. <laughs> and so Stranger Things is, uh, unsurprisingly, like, I love that show. Yeah, so, it's pretty good. Uh, pretty excited. Next up, uh, T-Mobile posted its third quarter earnings results this morning. Uh, unsurprisingly, results were strong. They added new customers, blah, blah, blah. All we actually care about is that Sprint and T-Mobile are supposed to get together in the coming weeks. Um, as evidenced by the fact that T-Mobile didn't hold a conference call. They basically just put out the release. Uh, and John Ledger had a, a quick video Q&A, like a seven-minute video, because uh, they didn't really want to take questions on the only thing we want to ask, and that's, <laughs> when are you going to buy a Sprint? And so we'll see. That's uh, that, that's that We're hearing uh, early next month, but they, uh, that could potentially shake up the industry and, for a lot of people, change up the service that they have. And your gut reaction is, bad idea. Uh, it's going to be messy, I would say. It's one of those things where, like, theoretically – if they can actually get it all to work together, like this would be an On awesome paper, carrier. It looks good. Service would be great. Yeah. Uh, all the technology works. But companies have a lot of trouble integrating businesses. And, and these are two very different, or these companies have very different assets that will take a lot of work to put together. So, lastly, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Ben's story about this retailer, Boxed, that managed to invest in robots and automation, uh, but still managed to keep all of their employees' jobs. Uh, kind of a happy ending story, not sort of goes against the idea that 
robots are just going to take over everything. <laughs> so uh, definitely check it out. Uh, for more of these stories, check us out on CNET. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Joni Sausman. Thanks for listening. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start delving through the comments and questions, but who is everyone's favorite Stranger Things character right now? Right now? Oh, my God, I love them all. Yeah, I know. It's like I'm picking my favorite child. I like John Ralphio's son. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> I like all the characters. Yeah, what's what's know. the kid's name? Ben? Some... I've forgotten I some of their names. I forget their names. I forget the actor's name. They become, they become their characters so much that I don't even think about their the actor's name. Except uh, Finn Wolfhart, which is the most yeah, metal Finn name. Yeah, Finn Wolfhart is pretty amazing. <laughs> Real name. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, re- I, was, uh, I remember being at Comic-Con where I forget who it was. Uh, I think it was either the moderator or one of the other actors kept like talking about how... It was a moderator. It was uh, the comedian. Uh, he kept joking about how the kid had like a porn star name, but... This was a kid he was talking about, so yeah. it felt a little weird. Boundaries. <laughs> Boundaries guy. Uh, the guy probably, he's probably, the kid's probably heard it, though. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess it's cliche to say 11, but, I mean, she's kind no of shame. She's the coolest. She is definitely the coolest. Yeah, yeah she, that Millie Bobby Brown really kind of stole the show. Oh, yeah. Like, out of nowhere, just, like, stole everyone's hearts. Right. And, yeah. you know, I love Egos, too. So I could, we've got a common thread there. <laughs> <laughs> Something you share in common. Um. What about you, Brian? Oh, like I said, I really like the kid who looks like John Ralphio from Parks oh. and Recreation. <laughs> right, right. Just, His character is also like the, a great character to love to hate. Yeah, like, well, he's he's, like, he's got a redemption story. He does. Which everybody yeah, loves. yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I it, like you said, it's truly an ensemble. I think I read somewhere I like, like he's funny for. Some I read reason. somewhere that they initially planned to, for him to like either be knocked off or be like kicked out of the show early, but like they right. liked him so much that they like wrote out the redemption. Arc and they him. couldn't do that for Barb. I know, right? That <laughs> I was, guess they have to have some people die. Someone had to die, I guess. Barb the Martyr. Bob, I Barb the Martyr. I mean, wasn't Barter. Stranger Things originally going to be an ensemble, or not an ensemble, an anthology show, like um, like American, American Horror Story, yeah. where oh. every season was supposed to be a refreshed kind I, of concept? I and then it's like, that, don't I you could... dare get rid of these kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, I mean, all their careers are doing really well after this, too. Uh, I'm Again, I'm terrible with the actors' names. But the guy who played the sheriff, he's the new Hellboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, That's really? awesome. I yeah. see the, uh, you know, the what's the adorable kid's name? Will. Will, the one that... No, with no, the curly no. hair? With the curly hair. He's oh, in, like, all the, the new Fios ads. Yeah, and I see him everywhere in those Fios ads. And he's killing it. He's killing it. He's so hilarious. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and jump into some questions from the chat. Norm Field says, have you seen the Stranger Things countdown banner that started on Friday? I think Netflix is expecting season two to be a pretty huge event. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hope it doesn't break their servers like Ooh. the other big releases. Well, you know, Netflix um, has a pretty good track record um, about not having those kind of service issues. Um, other streaming like services. like HBO is HBO, the main culprit. And you know what's funny is HBO Go is the one that struggles. HBO Now has a completely different back end. And so uh. if you subscribe directly to HBO online via HBO Now, you're less likely to have those problems than if mm. you get it through your cable subscription by watching it in their HBO Go app. Um, which in a way makes sense because like if you're actually paying for the app, like it better friggin' work. Right, right. Um, but it better friggin' work no matter how you're paying. Um, Netflix, though, has a really good track record. Usually when you guys have trouble with streaming something, um, you know, not a blanket scenario, but usually it's because of something on, like, your ISP, your internet service provider's yeah, I, end, or I your always, mobile provider's end, I always or your question, device end. I always question that. Like, whenever it starts to choke out, I'm like, is it? Is it Verizon Fios or is it Netflix? Like, I and, you know, I yeah. don't really know for sure, but... It, there's no way to really know yeah. um, unless you want to waste a lot of time figuring out why you're not getting what you <laughs> want to watch. But um like babe, we gotta run some speed tests right now. Right. I don't know what's going on. But Netflix has a pretty good track record in that regard. All right. So rest assured you'll be able to get your your Stranger Things and well in H D hopefully. Who all's binging it here this weekend? Because uh Michael Hickey says I'm going to marathon it after I catch up with haters and I know like it's going to be ev- every ounce of strength I have to not sit down and the whole thing in one one shot. I think I'll uh, unwittingly binge the whole thing. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm pretty sure I won't binge it. I like, I I probably be able to grab two or three extra hours to watch it. But that's that's it. I just can't turn it off. I sacrifice sleep unwillingly with really? Stranger Things. Like when mm. that when I was started watching, I think I watched eight episodes all in one night. Yeah, up until like I four think, in the morning. I think when I went the first time around, I did. I binged like I think half the season and then like yeah. another half the next day. Yeah, it was hard I to stop know. watching. It's really addictive. Here's an interesting uh, response. 
Pele says, Stranger Things is just a series that's been hyped up and blown out of proportion. Six out of ten for now. Wow. And that is an uncommon response to that. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm speechless. Yeah. Um, and that's coming from somebody who doesn't care about a lot of TV shows. But Stranger Things really kind of whisked me away to a place that kind of hit all the right notes. Pele, I'm just kind of curious. What what did you find kind of meh about Stranger Things? I I'm know also, you're not calling it out, calling it crap, but you're just like, I don't know why everybody loves it so much. I'm, I just want to know your perspective. I, I want Pele also to open up his Netflix um, splash page, his homepage, and see like what his, I want to know what his carousels are, like the first carousels mm. that come up. Yeah. Because what probably, it's probably just something that's not right for him. He's not in a taste cluster no, Stranger I mean, everybody's well, I, entitled to I'd their also own taste, like to but know, Stranger Things has stolen across so not many. Not to get too, too creepy, but I'd like to know his age, because there, I mean, it does sort of hit a certain nostalgia factor, depending on how old That's you true. are. That's very true. For me, like, it like hit that sweet spot of the 80s. Right so on. For folks who didn't grow up with that, it doesn't resonate as strongly. Definitely wouldn't. I totally see what yeah. you're coming from there. Um, oh, wow. I just don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> It's okay, Pele. You're allowed to. Yeah. You're totally. absolutely yeah, allowed, allowed to. to. Yeah, no. I mean, I, there's a lot of things. I don't like Game of Thrones. I'm Weird. super indifferent to Game of Thrones, Weird. and I've lost interest in Walking Dead. And yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of just watching it now because I'm watching it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why anymore. All right, more <laughs> questions. Uh, Norm <laughs> says the Netflix Marvel shows are pretty amazing too. I can't wait for Punisher next month. I too am excited for Punisher. I'm really excited to see Jessica Jones come back because that yeah. to date is my favorite of the Marvel. I like that one a lot, yeah. Oh, I love Let's that see, one. That one well, like, that caught one me so Daredevil off guard. The only two I, like, I'll be honest, I'm not really a fan of those. Like mm -hmm. I did enjoy parts of Jessica Jones and parts of Daredevil, but like I find them to be kind of boring. Oh I mean, man, and Jessica weird. Jones kept me going the whole time. I was really? floored. There it, were was, certain, it got I feel like heavy too. In the middle of the season, I was like, this show could have ended already. Like she could have just <laughs> punched him in the face. And it been... <laughs> so what are what else is coming down the pipe? We got Stranger Things this week. Do we know uh, what are the other big tent poles coming down through from? Well, there's that Bright movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah they're making Smith. a huge yep. hubbub about that. Yeah, they spent a lot of money on it. Will Smith is in it. Um, it's got a supernatural vibe to it too. Um, that's in December. Um, I can, you know what? I will answer this question. Um, I will do a little research right now. Here's an easy one for you. Josh is asking: Are the uh, Marvel TV shows leaving Netflix when Disney starts their own service? No. So. Um, that's a really good question. My understanding is that uh, what you're ta thinking of is the deal that Netflix has with Disney. That's for Disney, um, things like the Marvel movies and like Pixar movies. That deal is the one that Disney's like, eh. but this is a part, but the Marvel TV shows are like a co-partnership between Netflix and um, Marvel slash Disney. So um, that deal is different from the Disney deal where Disney's like, we're pulling out of Netflix. So you don't need to worry about- So those shows are safe. Yeah, those All shows right. are safe for as long as they've been agreed to to make. And I think they've been successful for both companies. So, But I, I would know. wonder if Disney's going to actually start developing their own to somehow compete with their own Netflix. I mean, it's I mean, possible, but they haven't had a lot. Of, Marvel hasn't had a lot of success on TV unless it's yeah. on Netflix. Like, yeah. What was it? The like, Well, there's Marvel. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, it's that, still going on. But it's not all that. It yeah. hasn't been very popular. It did okay. I would argue it's actually gotten better, but people yeah. stopped watching it. Yeah. And then there was uh, um, Agent Carter. Agent Carter, right? That one, that one did not. And then, like right now, there's the Inhumans, and that flopped. Is it, it flopping? Is it going on? I don't even know if it's on anymore. I don't. It's not getting good reviews at yeah. all. No, I mean that. Just the. I mean, you look at the trailer; like it looks really terrible. And then the next thing is going to be Cloak and Dagger, I think. Oh yeah. On Freeform. Yeah, yeah. So they had a lot of that at Comic Con. Maybe they'll have uh, a little bit more luck. With I mean, show? I don't know. The, it, it, I don't think we have to worry about Marvel. Um, Disney pulling Marvel out of everything and going completely exclusive. They're wiser to spread their tendrils across, like Hydra, <laughs> across all of the <laughs> different platforms in hopes to, you know, pull in different audiences they might not have been aware of. I mean, yeah. if, if they really wanted to just play it close to the chest, everything would have been on ABC, and we know that's obviously not the case. Right. Oh, well, I mean, Freeform's another Disney channel. True. You're right. I forgot about that. <laughs> but Netflix is not. Right, right. Yeah. Other things coming um, to answer that question, David Fincher, like Netflix's second original oh, se yeah. series from David Fincher called Mindhunter is going to be in the next, before the end of the year. Um, Sabura, which is an Italian show in Italian, like original in Italian. That's getting a lot of buzz right now. Hmm. Um, something called Dark, which is also their first German original series. Um, and The Crown, the second season oh, of The yeah. Crown, which was something that they spent a lot of money on. Was that? I wonder if that was. Was that like it was a critical 
dead wrong. I thought it was kind of snoozy, but I watched the whole thing huh. over Thanksgiving last year. Oh, it's a period piece, right? Yeah. And one of those big set, gorgeous set designs. Yeah, kind of it's That's very, very went. beautiful. Yeah. It, it looks really nice. It's all about um, Queen Elizabeth's, like, the early days of her reign. Got in it. England. All right, let's switch gears over to T-Mobile. Matthew Datcher, Datch in the chat. What's up? Datch! Haven't had or haven't T-Mobile and Sprint been talking about the merger for several years? Which one is requir- <laughs> a- acquiring which? What's going to happen to the deal offered by T-Mobile? All right, so I'll try to take them all one at a time. They have been in some at some level talking to each other for years. Uh, you know, SoftBank, which is Sprint's parent company, famously tried to buy T-Mobile a few years ago. The government stepped and said, "No, that's we don't. We want four national carriers." We've got a different administration now, so the thinking is they have a better shot with the Trump presidency versus an Obama presidency. So um, from what I'm hearing, a deal is likely to be announced um, sometime in early November. T-Mobile would be the acquirer. It's almost like a merger of equals. It's going to be a stock deal, but uh, in the end, T-Mobile's parent company, Deutsche Telekom, will be the majority shareholder and will have control over it. And, And John Ledger and his team will run the combined company. Gotcha. Yeah. Because that was going to be the next question from Josh to say, who's really going to be in charge after all this right. goes down? So, I mean, look, uh, it, it's hard to discount the effect that John Ledger's had on the wireless industry and, and how well T-Mobile has done. Uh, he's basically taken from zero to 60 in you know, a few short quarters. Yeah. So it makes sense for him to keep going with that. And I mean, Marcelo Claret, who's the CEO of Sprint, has done some stuff <laughs> in terms of turning Sprint around, but they're still kind of in trouble. They're still kind of a mess. So... I, I imagine if I'm a Marcelo, I'm like, I'm going to take my pay out and just walk away. My golden parachute. Yep, with lots and lots of money. And let's try to help out Blair. Now, it's too early to say with how, like, the, the state that this acquisition is in. Yeah. Uh, but Blair asks, if I owe one of the services money and they merge, am I going to have to pay up or keep using my phone? Huh. Uh, so, either way, the, the deal gets announced. It'll be like a year, maybe even longer until the deal gets sealed. So it, it really depends on what your terms of contracts are and like whether or not you're willing to switch. Um, even after the deal closes, I don't imagine that they're going to be booting people off right away. T-Mobile bought Metro PCS a few years back, and they were fairly – they gradually phased out the phones because they were using a different technology – and sort of replaced phones for users as needed. But it, it was a gradual process. So you're, no one's getting booted out. Uh, in terms of paying up, I'm assuming paying for your phone, that I think is right. still going to be dependent upon Paying your, out the contract. Yeah, you're, it's dependent upon your, your carrier. So if you're like with Sprint, you're still going to be paying up the, the service as is for a while. Just because it's going to take a while for this thing to close and for them to even start integrating the services. Right, and even like... As things might shift and change, and as far as service goes, it's going to be a while before it really takes gear. It's really just about John Ledger getting more money for his pink sock collection. Pretty much, or it's his pink, pink, everything sne- pink collection. sneaker collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Pink airplane. I mean, look. The, I think the ultimate goal, what consumers would want to see, is that T-Mobile and Sprint would combine their spectrum assets, all the, the wireless airwaves that they have. Uh, that could theoretically provide a much, much better service, both indoors, outdoors, throughout the country. But it's going to take, I would say, years until that actually happens in any kind of meaningful way for consumers. One more from the Dats before we close it out. Uh, I thought Deutsche Telekom was trying to get out of the U.S. market. Was I wrong, or did that change? No, no, they, you're, you're not wrong. They wanted to get out, and then John Ledger took over, and T-Mobile stock started soaring. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, and now Deutsche Telekom is in that, in that rare position of power, and, they actually now they don't want to give it up because it's become it's gone from one of the laggards to one of its growth engines, uh, and that's why they're in such a great position to to bargain. Steve with Jobs did. Well, uh, that's, that's that's probably a, a little strong. Yeah, 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 that's a, a, I mean, he, he did a, a good he job. The business he did, but that's I mean, Steve Jobs did a lot more, I hmm. think, but arguably. But, I don't have a better analogy. All right, it's a. I mean, yeah, in terms yeah, of the the. The baseline principle, it's all the same. But, uh, yeah, it, that's why Deutsche Telekom now can basically uh, argue for terms, for better terms to SoftBank. Right. Have Now, before we close it out, have we ever seen anything like this before as far as an acquisition? Big, two big players? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, Sprint and in, Next... In the cell phone market. Yeah, though. Sprint yeah. and Nextel. Sprint itself is a product of a merger between Sprint and Nextel. And back then, both were two very strong companies, and they merged, and they became a one terrible crappy company <laughs> with terrible crappy service for years to the point where it almost wrecked that business. And that's why there's like that. Did that anybody hear tale. 
go get caught down that uh, that no. that whirlwind? No, I was a Sprint customer before the merger, uh, but I, I remember the service getting progressively worse and worse for customers. And they were running two networks for a while because they were not compatible, and both networks were like getting crappier and crappier. And so, you know. So we have that to look forward to. Yeah. All right, everybody, that's it for today. Roger, you want to bring us home? Yes. If you liked anything you saw or heard here, check us out on CNET. Our podcast is also available on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, SoundCloud, FeedBurner, and Google Play Music. We'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.